All right, Haggai 1. Let's go to the next one. And I don't know, this is probably not the most commonly read book in the Old Testament or New Testament, you know, comparison, but it's a really rich story, and there's a lot that we can pull out from this. Um, I'm recognizing what time it is, so I'm not going to be much longer, but it's important. What does it say at the top? Preventing? Everybody know what I'm referring to there? Stall speed? When you're flying a plane, you know, smaller plane, it has to hit a certain uh, speed while you're in the uplift, or if it stalls, the plane will crash, right? So you want to have a, wa a walk with the Lord that avoids stall speed. You don't want to get lukewarm. You don't want to get cold to the Lord because you're doing good, and all of a sudden stall speed comes, and now you're back doing that old destructive behavior again, right? And that, you know, that's... None of us are immune from that potentially happening to us. Another the thing Trisha preached about when she was in Texas is passivity and not allowing passivity to grip. And it's really worth watching. And it's right up on our YouTube channel. So uh, YouTube and, and on our Facebook channel. You need to watch that word and take notes because she really does a beautiful job. All right. So what's the story? A lot of you remember Nehemiah, I'm sure, uh, being in the palace of the, of the pagan king, right? Cyrus, remember this? have enough Bible history to know the, they were taken ca into captivity. And all of a sudden, Cyrus, who President Trump is being compared to by Lance Wall now, remember when Lance was here? He said that President Trump has a Cyrus anointing. Well, what did he mean? That God used somebody who wasn't an overt Christian to help supply the kingdom of God. And Cyrus said, you know, I'm going to give you enough money, Nehemiah, to go back and rebuild the city of Jerusalem. And that was a beautiful, symbolic thing. But when they went back... They, they stalled. They hit stall speed. So even though God provided them money for a purpose, they started the purpose and then they stalled. Do you think that could be a Christian today? Could be any one of us. It could be in a small area that looks insignificant to you. No, I'm doing good. Everything's fine. But in this one area, I've stalled. And the Lord's saying, no, no, wait a minute. Consider your ways. That's not a good thing for a prophet to come up to you and say, consider your ways. Because <laughs> that usually means duck, because <laughs> I got a word of correction coming. And that's what prophets do, so that's okay. Not always easy. And it says that the word of the Lord came by Haggai, and, and it's just right in the opening of the first verse of the first chapter that this prophet is going to come and give a word to the leaders. And it says, the word came by Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel, who was the governor of Judah, and to Joshua. Now, again, this is 16 years after they've been given the money to start the camp to rebuild, okay, 16 years. And verse 2 says, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says the time has what? Not come the time that the Lord's house should be built. That's not starting out too good, is it? The prophet coming, he's coming up in your grill, <laughs> and he's saying, Listen, your people are saying it's not the time to build the house of the Lord. Verse 3, then the word of the Lord came again, saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses and this temple to lie in ruins? Starting to get a little loose in the collar, kind of. It's getting warm in here. See, they're being corrected. And here it comes. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. So God wasn't happy with them. They had hit stall speed. He had blessed them. With the, with the funds, miraculously bless them with the funds. Let's just see what one of the commentators says. You can go to the next slide. And it says, They had returned from exile by permission of Cyrus in the first year of his occupancy of the throne in Babylon 16 years ago and started to build the temple when they first got there. But the, what, say it with me, the opposition of the neighbors. Anybody here get any opposition? Yeah, of course we do. And then contradictory orders from the Persian court. See laws being passed in our culture that we don't agree with. And then their own lukewarmness had contributed to hinder the work. See, so again, what Trisha was saying in Texas, watch out for that passivity. Watch out for the stall speed. They had been blessed with the resources they needed to rebuild the city, but they were living in a stall speed. They got lukewarm. And there was opposition, so it's not like there wasn't people coming against them. There was opposition, but they let it stop because it says it soon wholly ceased, the building ceased, and it remained suspended until what happened? The moment when the prophet Haggai was, was commissioned to arouse them from their apathy. <laughs> See, that, that's really the power of a prophet that's willing to be obedient. Here's the word of the Lord and come and says, you know what, guys? I know you're a little bit 
tired. You've been getting a lot of opposition, but the Lord wants you to know he gave you the money to rebuild the city, not your own house. You take care of the Lord's house, he takes care of your house. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the next one. This is a hard couple of verses, isn't it? The Lord speaking through the prophet saying, you have sown much and you bring in little. You eat, but you don't have enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord, in case you didn't hear it the first two times, <laughs> consider your ways. Oh, boy. So this is that wrestling match that we go through. Part of that whole transformation process, sanctification process. We're living our lives, and we know not, things aren't falling apart, but there's little things we're not seeing the progress on. And then you'll get a word. You'll, you'll, you'll be encouraged by someone, and then that curse starts to rise up and says, you're never going to amount to anything. There's too much opposition coming against you. The laws have been passed, and, you know, you just started stalling. And getting lukewarm. And then the prophet comes and bangs you up and he says, no, consider your ways. There's a higher calling on your life. God provided you the funds to rebuild the temple. You've allowed this opposition to stop you. But I'm here to tell you, God is with you. You can fight this thing. He goes on to say that. Oh, but this is hard, right? Because the next one says, ha, go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple that I might take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You looked for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you brought it home, <laughs> that's how I picture it. <laughs> he just, <laughs> he blew it away. It's because he's mean? Nobody wants to answer. I've so gotten you guys conditioned. Sorry. God blew it away because if they hadn't got off the track they were on, this house that he wanted built was never going to be built. So somebody had to come in. Look, you so much, you bring in little. You eat, you don't have enough to eat. That sounds like a curse to me. It was a curse of disobedience. He told them to rebuild the temple. This is why the money was given to you, and you're using it to rebuild your house. That's a curse of disobedience. But it was self-imposed, so it's very easy to just confess that sin Repent to the Lord. If you repent, he's faithful and just to forgive you, isn't he? How many know that one? <laughs> and not just forgive you, but cleanse you from the iniquity of the sin. And that's what a curse is. It's that iniquity of the sin. And then uh, you can go to the next one. Because um, he said right at the end, I blew it away. And then there's this question, why did I blow it away? And then he answers it in verse 9. Because my house is in ruins, while every one of you is running to his own house. Therefore, the heavens above you withhold the dew, and the earth withholds its fruit. I called for the drought, the Lord says, for your good, because I want you to be blessed, and you are in stall speed, and you were just getting by, and I got a better calling for you than stall speed. So I needed to interrupt your life, and I need to come now and tell you, consider your ways. This is a good thing. This is what a good father does. It's what a good mother does. They don't just candy coat everything and pour molasses on everything. Jesus didn't do that. He told the woman caught in adultery, go and sin no more. You're forgiven, but don't keep living this sinful lifestyle. That's because he loved her. He didn't want her falling under that curse. Amen? So he called for the drought. I'm going to come down the home stretch. I'll just suffice it to say in the next one, in verses 12 through 14, uh, the people got stirred, and that word of the Lord acted as that spark to wake them out of their lethargy and to break off that stall speed. And they went like, oh, yeah, how could we get so far off? They repented, and it says right at the bottom, they all came, and they worked on the house of the Lord of hosts.